Mark just threw this in, the, 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 uh, uh, Mark, the writer of this gospel. He didn't throw this in just for good measure. Words of scripture are not wasted. It says he threw his cloak aside. Mark is trying to teach us something here. Bartimaeus' cloak was a hindrance. It slowed him down. You know, before I came to know the Lord, I had so many cloaks in my life. I knew I was under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, for most of my life. And uh, yet I had all these cloaks in my life. The Lord was calling me to follow him, but I wanted the cloak of wanting to live life my way. Anybody else ever had that problem? You know, when I first became a Christian, I remember praying the, the prayer of salvation. I, you know, I grew up as a uh, backslidden Methodist. That's the best way I can say it. I went to church, but I was never really a follower of Jesus until I started hanging out with these Pentecostals. I'm like, I'm either going to have to get saved or get far away from these people. It's too uncomfortable. But I was in college and uh, went to EKU, Eastern Kentucky University, and I uh, was not, you know, I would, I would go out on the weekends, you know, I would be out drinking and what have you, and, but I would come home um, at sometimes at night and I would watch this show called The 700 Club. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, here I am out drinking, and then I come home and watch Pat Robertson. It just was a weird combination. <laughs> but I was just on the conviction of the Lord, you know, and so I'd come home and uh, you know, watch the 700 Club, and, and, and Pat Robertson, at the end of every one of his programs, would pray a prayer of salvation. And I remember wanting to pray that prayer, and, and, and I would listen to what he would say, and, and I would pray most of the prayer, but then when he'd get to the very end of the prayer, he would say, now I surrender my whole life to you. And he'd say, now just repeat that. 
and or you know to the audience and and I just couldn't say that part of the prayer because I just I, I you know I wanted salvation but I just kind of wanted to live my life the way I wanted I I knew hell was bad heaven good I did not want to go to hell I wanted to go to heaven that was my theology at the moment you know at, the, at that point in my life so so I just said okay Lord you know I just want to get saved but I kind of want to do things my way and you know that never really works with God I was afraid that if I fully surrendered my life to Jesus, that he might like make me a preacher or something. <laughs> or worse, a missionary. <laughs> I was trying to protect myself there. But it was only after I threw off the cloak of wanting to do it my way that I was able to fully come to Jesus. And sure enough, after I became a Christian, since the Lord called me into full-time ministry, but I wanted to make money, and I knew being a pastor and making money were polar opposites. <laughs> so the cloak for me at that time was money. My question for you this morning, are there any cloaks in your life? Is there anything you're holding on to right now that is keeping you from following the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul? As Crystal mentioned this during worship. Is there anything that you're holding on to right now? Maybe it's the cloak of fear. Maybe you're just walking in a spirit of fear. That's like a cloak. Maybe it's a cloak of doubt. Well, here's a big one, unforgiveness. Any unforgiveness in your heart that you've not been able to release? Anger, frustration. Whatever it is, throw that cloak off so that you can fully come to Jesus. I got a question for you. Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt closer to Jesus than you do right now? You look back in your life, boy, I felt really close to Jesus a decade ago. You know, there may be that over the last decade, there's some cloaks that have come into your life. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to heaven right now if you died. But maybe some things that have just come into your life that are these cloaks that you've taken on, that the devil has given you to take on. And maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe it's just indifference. Take that cloak off so that you can jump to your feet and come to Jesus. Verse 50b says he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. He was obedient as soon as the Lord spoke. And I don't know how a blind man jumps to his feet and comes to Jesus, but he did. When Jesus speaks, be quick to respond. Bartimaeus jumped to his feet. Of all the things I regret in my Christian life, it's those times when I was not obedient immediately. When I sensed the Lord saying, you know, write that check for 500 and I wrote it for 50, <laughs> you know. It's been those times. I specifically remember, I think we got a little bit of time here. Uh, I, you know, it was several years ago since the Lord telling me to write a letter telling a previous pastor when I was in that little Methodist church how he imp impacted my life. And I had a pastor when I was a kid that just, he sensed the Lord was calling me into ministry and told me one day, I didn't like that guy. But he called me, he says, I think the Lord's calling you into ministry. I'm like, really, me? You know, and uh, like, you know, um, you know, God's going to have to help me out a lot there, brother. But, uh, you know, he was a really great man. He was a little, little league baseball coach for me and so forth. And, and just a few years ago, since the Lord told me to write a letter to him, just saying, you know, thank you for, for your ministry to me. I really appreciate it and so forth. And I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Till finally, that season just passed by. And I never, no longer had that burden to do that. But what I learned is that he needed that letter at that time the Lord was speaking to me to do that. And I regret that. I just have deep regret. I'm not, I just regret that I wasn't obedient at that moment. Just be obedient. When the Lord speaks, just be quick to respond. You're in Walmart and you see somebody over there and the Lord says, go pray for them. Just reach over there and just, you can do a, you know, you can pray for them from a distance, you know, or a Pentecostal, Pentecostal waves, or you can go right up there and just put your hand on them and pray for them. Just do what, just be sensitive to the Lord as he's leading you, because there's a lot of people out there that are hurting right now. And before they walk through this, the doors of these churches, they're probably going to have to have a relationship with you first. So just be quick to respond. It says he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. And this is what we read next. It says, The Lord says, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus' response was simple and to the point. I want to see. It's a very short prayer. Men, do you ever struggle with words when you're praying and you don't know what to say? 
And after you've prayed five minutes, you've prayed everything you know to pray, it's okay. I want to see. That was his prayer. I used to think you had to pray long, specific prayers in order for the Lord to hear you, but you don't. I want to see is what Bartimaeus said. He didn't go into the history of all the things that have happened to him. He just said, I want to see. I want to see. And then verse 52, Jesus prays this really long prayer over Bartimaeus. And what does he say? Go. <laughs> go. I'm thinking, that's it? This man's been begging and, and pleading and, 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 and the prayer that Jesus prays over him is go. That's what he speaks. He says, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. And I love this. It says, your faith has healed you. What faith did Martabaeus have? He had probably never gone to rabbinical school. He was blind. In that day and age, they believed if you had a sickness like blindness that you had sin in your life or your parents had sin in your life. That's why you were blind. Thank the Lord we don't believe that today. This guy had never heard Pastor Steve preach. He had never read probably much of the Old Testament or what we would call the Old Testament, the Torah. What faith did he have? He believed Jesus was the son of David, the Messiah. And this morning, if you believe in Jesus with all that he is and all that he said he was, you too have great faith. You don't have to work it up. You don't have to spin yourself into a frenzy. You've got great faith if you believe in Jesus. It says your faith has healed you. Now Jesus did not stop for Bartimaeus because he had a need. If Jesus stopped because we had needs, or if he responded to needs alone, then all the needs of the world would have already been met. We haven't thought about that. If Jesus responded to need alone, then all the needs of the world would have already been met. Why did he stop for Bartimaeus? Jesus, son of David. He responds to our faith. That's the only thing he can respond to. Amen. Jesus doesn't stop just because we have needs. He stops because we call upon him knowing that he can meet our needs. I'm concerned that oftentimes we pray without really believing the Lord is going to act on our behalf. Sometimes our prayers are not really sincere. It's, it's important that we believe the Lord will act on our behalf. And the Lord always answers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. And we won't fully understand why some prayers were answered and some prayers weren't, weren't until we are with the Lord in heaven. The important thing is that we just continue to call upon the Lord. When Jesus touches a person, he not only changes their life, but their identity as well. Notice in the story, he was called blind Bartimaeus, but now they just call him Bartimaeus. He has a whole new identity. And when the Lord saved you, he gave you a whole new identity. You're not that old person they used to say you were, whatever that person was. I ran into an old friend from high school, early college years. I saw him at the Dollar General store the other night. Boy, I tell you what, if churches were Dollar General stores or Dollar General stores were churches, we'd have this thing whipped, man. <laughs> It'd be over. Had a chance encounter with this guy, maybe a divine encounter. Just, he will talk, we were talking, and he began to remind me uh, of all the things I used to be. He was kind of just, you know, not in a hateful way. I don't guess it was hateful. But he was just like, you remember when you used to do this? And you remember when you used to do that? And I was like, well, I was trying to forget. But yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks for reminding me. Lord bless you with hemorrhoids. But uh, he was just reminding me of all the things that kind of used to be and all the things I'd done and some things I'd even forgotten. But as I was getting to my car and driving home, I just said to the Lord, not in arrogance or anything like that, but just said, Lord, I didn't even probably recognize that old guy that he was talking about. I mean, you have really done work in my life. Thank you, Jesus. I am no longer blind. And you aren't either. Don't ever let those old things that were spoken over you define you for who you are now. You are a new creation in Christ. 
you are no longer blind. You can now see. You've been given a whole new identity. It's your choice to walk in that. It says, after Jesus healed Bartimaeus, the scripture says, he followed Jesus along the road. I love that part. It says he followed, he became a follower. You know, I am very concerned. I've come back to America post-COVID, and I visit church after church after church after church. I'll probably be in at least 70 churches over the course of, of, of the last 12 months. And I see the same thing. Every pastor tells me the same story. So-and-so used to attend this church, and now they're no longer attending. And I'll say, well, where are they attending now? Brother Kent, they're not going to church anywhere. I'm like, what happened? I don't know. They're just not going to church anywhere. These were people who were blind, who could see, and now they've jumped off the road and they're on the side, not going to church anywhere at all. You don't have to come to church to get saved, but if you're going to remain saved, you better be in church because you're not going to make it on your own in this day and age. My encouragement to you, you're following Jesus. You're here Sunday morning. Don't give up. Don't sit to the roadside. Continue to follow Jesus like Bartimaeus. Once you know the truth, you can never turn your back on that truth. We're called to follow Jesus all the way to eternity. And it seems like eternity is getting closer and closer every day. Continue to follow the Lord. Don't stay on the road with Jesus. This is not the time to go to the side. Continue to follow the Lord all the way into eternity. And I cannot wait. I want Bartimaeus is one of the first people I want to meet when I get to heaven. I want to ask about how his life turned out. It's just an incredible story. And I wish we had more scripture about that, but then Jesus moves on to the next miracle. Here's an old song, practically a hymnal. It was released in 2000, not hymnal status yet. This is Open the Eyes of My Heart. You know it so well, right? You know that song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. And boy, that's what Bartimaeus said. His eyes were fully open. He recognized who Jesus was. And this morning, I don't know that any of you are blind. If you are, we'll pray for you. Most of you, I think, can see, but maybe your heart is not as open as it needs to be. Maybe there's some things you need to make right with God this morning before you begin the rest of this new year. And if that's you this morning, let's make things right. If there's some of you here this morning, you've not really been following closely to the Lord. You've, you've got some cloaks in your life. There's some things you know you need to let go of. Maybe there's some stuff on the internet you need to, to let go of. Maybe there's some things that's going on in your life that you just need to let go of. This morning, I encourage you to let go of those things. Maybe there's some of you this morning, you've been praying, you've prayed a hundred times for the healing of your back or your, your mind or, or something like that. Maybe to, this morning we can make it 101. We can continue to seek the Lord. 